So what's the plan for today? McDonald's McGriddle. Hey, what's up guys, Neve here, and what you guys just saw was a whole video shrunken down to about seven seconds. That video was a little bit different than what you usually see on this channel, but to make sense of this video, we have to go back about two weeks ago. So like I said, about two weeks ago, I got an email from Jungle Scout, and they were talking about their new competition that had to do with their new software, the supplier database, which basically allows you to connect with different manufacturers all over the world. So needless to say, I was obviously interested, so I called up my friend and camera guy, Misha, and we started brainstorming about what kind of video we could put out talking about the supplier database and how to use it successfully. We were thinking about full sending it and just buying tickets to China and kind of comparing the old way of finding suppliers, which is just actually going to China, versus the new way, which is using the supplier database to kind of find the suppliers that way. But then we realized that you know a 20 plus hour flight to China is probably not the most economical thing to do. So we kept thinking about how we can still talk about the supplier database, yet be entertaining, fun, and obviously valuable because that's the number one priority I have here on the channel. After a few days, we decided that we were gonna do a Jubilee sort of comparison thing where if you guys watch the Jubilee videos, the bottom line series that they have where they compare someone who makes a lot of money versus someone who makes a little bit of money. We wanna do something similar to that, but we were gonna do a little bit of a twist where we were gonna compare the old traditional way of finding a manufacturer, which is obviously going and flying out to China versus the new way, which is using the supplier database. Basically what we did was we got Misha to actually pretend like he was going out to China. We had filmed a whole bunch of stuff with him packing and we actually drove off to the airport to pretend like you know he was gonna go off to China versus me where I was going to stay here um, and go through kind of my daily life and also go through the supplier database and how I now am able to find you know trustworthy, trustworthy suppliers without actually having to fly off like Misha. And we were calculating the cost and we had the money show up and everything. And um, you know it just didn't work out because we felt like once we were editing it, it got a little bit too skittish and a little bit too um, you know cringy. So we decided that you know we didn't want to put out anything cheesy on the channel and there wasn't too much value in that video. So in this video. What I wanted to do is I wanted to actually give you guys a ton of value in terms of my favorite way to use the supplier database and to share with you guys some of the tips and tricks that I'm using that aren't actually really talked about right now. So first off in this video, I wanna cover the pros and cons of the different types of manufacturing. So from the US, from China, and from the supplier database. And then I wanna go over a few things which I think are really, really awesome about the supplier database, which is one, how to find non-Chinese suppliers, which we were never able to do before. Two, how to actually vet those suppliers because the stuff that you see on Alibaba is really not vetted. Those are kind of self given information from the actual manufacturers. And three, I've got a special bonus for you guys about tariffs and importing, which I know a lot of people have questions about. And we're gonna use a supplier database to actually be able to calculate those all for us. So without wasting any more time, guys, let's get right into it. So traditionally we had two main ways to actually source products. In the past we had the US and China. So basically if you were gonna sell products on Amazon or actually any e-commerce, you were actually either sourcing them mostly from, the, from, from China or from the US. Now both of those have some serious pros and cons with them and in this kind of little bit, I wanna actually go over exactly what those are. Some of you might know what they are, but I really wanna go in depth into this and show you guys exactly why the supplier database has solved many of these issues. So let's start off with the US. Okay, so the US, the pros of the US is that you can have the made in USA kind of branding, right? You're able to kind of build on top of the already existing patriotic uh, support that the US has. A lot of people love to buy products that are actually made in the US and support the country. The cons though, however, are very, very big ones, which is it's hard to sometimes find a good manufacturer or just find a manufacturer that can make this for you in general, especially at a cost effective price, which is the second con, which is that it's very, very expensive most of the time. The second option is sourcing from China, which is something that a lot of people opt for. Has a lot of cons as well, but the, let's just start off with the pros. So the pros is that you're able to actually source for a much cheaper price than elsewhere in the world. So that's pretty much the only pro. Um, the cons list is a little bit longer. The first con, for example, is sometimes you can get bad quality product. Even if you get a sample first and you get an inspection, sometimes the quality of the products can be worse than what you're expecting. And that could be really bad, especially for Amazon with your reviews and uh, all the kind of you know all the kind of stuff. It, reviews really, really hurt you if you get bad reviews on Amazon. So obviously you wanna get good quality products. So that's number one. Con number two is competition. So obviously a lot of people are, anyone who's kind of doing e-commerce is probably sourcing from China, especially if they're doing Amazon. So if you have a product that you found super successful and you continue to reorder it from China, eventually people are gonna come start coming to the market 
and you know the competition is going to rise because people can always source their products from china they're all sourcing from the same manufacturers they're getting the similar prices and similar qualities so it's very difficult sometimes to differentiate yourself if you're all sourcing from the same pool of manufacturers and con number three which is the tariffs so now we have some tariffs between china and the USA, which means that either one of two things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna to have to raise your price to cover the cost of tariffs, so pass it on to your consumers. Or two, you're gonna to have to take a thinner profit margin. None of these are good outcomes, so that's kind of another con on the manufacturing and sourcing from China now. Those, like I said, are the traditional ways of sourcing. But now we have a new way, which is the supplier database. And what the supplier database actually allows us to do is open up our manufacturing pool to literally the rest of the world. So like most of you guys know, like I did myself, if you find a product on Amazon that you think you can sell, if you can't find it on Alibaba, you just scrap the idea. You never actually go and commit to it because you know if you can't get it on Alibaba, that means you can't get it anywhere. So that's kind of a mentality that I had and a few of my students also had, and that's not a good way to go about it. So the supplier database actually allows us to go and look at non-Chinese suppliers. So not only USA suppliers, but all over the world. So Germany, you know, Vietnam, Philippines, literally anywhere you can possibly imagine, every country in the world has manufacturing plants. So what you're able to do with the supplier database is actually open up the pool to the rest of the world. So the pros is that you get more suppliers, you get better prices because you're able to actually source from countries that specialize in what it is that they're making. So why do you think that, you know, a lot of things are probably made in China, but there's always things that you find around your house or anywhere that aren't made in China. They're made in other places in the world. And that's just because the quality is better from there and it's probably cheaper to get it from there. So with the supplier database, now you're able to look elsewhere and find good products elsewhere. You're able to get better quality and also there's gonna be less competition because people won't be able to find your manufacturer, people won't be able to source your exact same product because most people who aren't using the supplier database are gonna to go to China and try to get it from there. And sometimes they just won't be able to make it the same way. So those are the prawns of the supplier database and honestly, I could not think of any cons. Uh, so there, there really aren't any cons for the supplier database especially because it is included with your Jungle Scout web app subscription. It's a completely free tool to use now. So let's go to my office. I'll show you guys exactly how I use the supplier database, all right? All right, guys, so now we're here in my studio. You guys probably recognize the backdrop here now. And we're gonna go over, like I said, a few things. So one, we're gonna go over how to find non-Chinese suppliers. We're gonna go over how to vet the suppliers and actually a tariff slash taxes bonus that I'll show you guys here. So one of the cool things about the supplier database is that it is completely free included with your web app subscription. So if you already have the web app, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to use my favorite strategy uh, in finding some products in here that again are non-Chinese because you don't want to rely only on China. Okay, there's a lot more a lot more out there that you're missing out on. So in this case, let's just go and type in coasters. Okay, coaster um, under the product tab. Let's say that's the product we're looking for. We want to find where exactly in the world we can find some coasters. That's hopefully not from China. So if you come in here, you can see that we have most of the stuff is going to be from China. So if you look at the flag here, you can see China, China, China. You know. Most of them are going to be from China. So what we can do is we can come in here in the country of origin tab and I can actually change it and filter out China, literally press it and every other place in the world is going to stay. China is not going to show up here anymore. So now you can see this is actually Hong Kong. I don't know if that's considered China or not, but we'll just go with it. So in this case, you can see that there is total shipments of 102 um, shipments in the past you press on view more you can see how long it's been so since february since january 2014 there's been 102 shipments now in this case they're only showing shipments that are coming into the us so in so there might be other shipments that are going all around the you know all around the world but this number is only showing the shipments that are going into the us so you can go in here and you can continue looking <clears throat> let's say we want to you know you can see here and what you're looking for is to have a lot of total shipments you want to see total shipments because that matters depending you know that means that the kind of manufacturer is very reliable. So let's go back up. I think that was a good example, the first one here. <clears throat> so 102 shipments with eight total customers in the US. This is also the top customers here. So if you can look in here and you know kind of see any big brands and stuff, that probably means that it's a pretty trustworthy supplier. Another thing that you want to do is actually come in here. And if you look at the manufactured product section, you can see a little graph, a little pie chart thing. And in this situation, just by looking at the pie chart, I can actually tell you that is this is a trading company and not actually a manufacturer. Most of you guys know that when we're looking for you know suppliers and stuff, we're looking for manufacturers, not trade companies, because we don't need a middleman 
to be the middleman to us, right? You don't want to have a middleman giving you your products. So let me to explain to you guys how I actually know that this is a middleman most likely. You can see that we typed in coasters, but if you look at all their product, you can see that there's 23.5% other, 22.6% machinery, then some aluminum products, vehicle, uh, you know, vehicle parts, toys and games, paper products, and other, in other, other. So you can see that they don't have you know largely one thing that they're focusing on so if you look at let's say let's see if we can find another one so look this one is i mean it doesn't have a lot of stuff but let's say vehicle parts if you can see this one's 100 percent vehicle parts that's all it sends out and when there's a lot of different types that means it's most likely a training company so that's one way to vet another thing you want to vet is actually how many shipments they've had in the past couple months because sometimes you'll see a big number of total shipments but they've only happened in the first few months that they were recording so maybe you know from 2014 to 2016 they had a ton of shipments and then they've been inactive since. If that happens, you clearly don't wanna do business with them because they haven't actually made a shipment in a few years. Not a good thing. So in this case, you see that it's fairly spread out, which means that you know potentially this is a good supplier to talk to. And if you wanna to talk to them, all you have to do is just scroll back up here, press search for contact info and shoot them a message. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a tab here. You click on you know the first couple of links wherever and actually just shoot them a message and contact them, right? And that's kind of how you're gonna do it with a supplier database. Now, I told you guys I was gonna show you also not only how to find the manufacturers, because it's very simple to find it, you just uncheck, you'll be able to look all over the world. Then also to vet, like I said, you wanna look at the pie charts, you wanna look at the top customers, and you wanna look at the shipment history. But lastly, I told you guys that I was gonna show you a cool little trick to know and estimate what your tariffs are gonna be um, in the future. So what you wanna do is actually scroll down from the main history chart, and let's just find like coaster, okay? So right here, coaster. What you wanna do is you wanna grab the HS code here. And if you guys don't know what HS code, basically what it is, it just shows us the kind of tariffs. It's like the tariffs code almost. And what you wanna do is you wanna take it and go into Flexport. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video where you can go to this link and actually um, you know, search up your HS code to see and estimate what your tax are gonna be. So we're gonna put that in here um, and we're going to press search. So you also have to make sure uh, what this is, so including coasters, braking hubs. I, I think this is actually machine parts. I'm not positive on this, but basically what you want to do is make sure that it's actually what you're what you're looking for. When you scroll down, you can see in this case, it shows us that the general uh, tariffs are free, right? It just says free. There's no tariffs for the most part, except for this. Let me show you guys an example though of a product that actually does have some serious tariffs on it. So in this case, okay, I searched up, what did I search up here? Some sort of mitten, glove mittens, okay? Like gloves. You go scroll down, you can see here, then in the general section, most of the country, so most of the specifications are 12.6% tax, 14% tax, 14, 14, um, and so on and so forth, right? Depending on exactly what it is that you're shopping for. Now, in this case, you can also see there's special rates for certain countries. There's the rate of you know free if you're you know shipping over from Australia, from this place, from Canada, from Chile, and, and so on and so forth. And for Korea in particular, it's a 6.3% tariff. And you know you just go through it like this. So this is a cool way also to know if the country that you're shipping, if, like you're gonna buy from, gives you t uh, tariffs or not. So for example, if from China you're gonna get a 14% tariff, but if you buy it from Chile or from India or from you know somewhere else, you're gonna get a you know no tariffs or maybe a two, three, four percent tariff. Even though the product might be cheaper in China, it might be overall cheaper after accounting for tariffs if you just buy it from a different country. So find the product in here, find the HS code and see you know which countries to source it from because sometimes it'll be a lot cheaper to source it from certain countries since they don't have tariffs put on certain products. So that's pretty much it guys. That's how I use the supplier database and that's how I'm gonna continue to grow and scale my business using the supplier database and this HS code stuff is really cool too. So let me know what you guys think about the supplier database. Is it too much information? Is it, you know, is it just enough information? Are you guys gonna use it? Leave a comment down below. Also guys, in the description, we're gonna have the link to pick up the supplier database. If you don't already have it, trust me, it's amazing. I hope that you guys saw how good it was. Also have a description in the description, I'll have the link to the video with Greg Mercer that you guys can check out. Um, anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video, remember to like the video um, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one.